Hi, I'm Scott Simi. I am the editor-in-chief of DroneDJ.com, and this is the Air 2S. Okay, we're going to hop into the features and the function and, of course, the footage produced by this drone in just a sec. But before we get there, two of the key differences between this and the Mavic Air 2. The first one's pretty obvious. It's got like four eyeballs on the front. Uh, those top two are also obstacle avoidance sensors so that when the drone is in forward flight and angled like that, it can have a look forward. But the biggest, arguably the biggest difference between this and the Mavic Air 2 is this camera. It can shoot 5.4K video and produce 20 megapixel stills. Now, you might say to yourself, what the heck? The Mavic Air 2 had 48 megapixel stills. I want my money back before I've even spent it. Well, true enough, on paper, yeah, 48 versus 20. But the Mavic Air 2 uses a quad Bayer sensor and it uses a technique called pixel binning to produce those 48 megapixel images. And a purist will tell you that those 48 megapixel images just aren't really the same as the quality of a 48 megapixel image that you'll get from a, say, a DSLR with a larger sensor on it. Well, this little puppy has a one inch sensor and a true 20 megapixel image output. And trust me on this one, this camera, it's better than the Mavic Air 2. Yes, I should have calibrated the gimbal, but you know what? I still love the look of this shot. Some nice detail here, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of boats that are just covered in that white shrink wrap, and they're actually reflecting a lot of light. They were all pretty hot looking that day, but the Air 2S kind of handled all of that pretty well. If you look at sort of the the shadow dark areas that are beneath the docks, they're coming through nice and dark, almost black, and yet the whites are not blown out in this image. And this is using the settings straight out of the camera. I wasn't shooting in D-Log, I wasn't going to do any post-production grading. I just wanted to give you kind of a out of the camera experience uh, because I think that actually reflects what most people how most people use DJI products. Of course, there are plenty of pros out there and some watching today who will do color grading, but most people just take their card out of the camera. Now, this is kind of a challenging shot really for any camera because much of the subject is in shade here. And then we've got this incredibly hot patch of sunlight on the water. In this example, even with the ND4 neutral density filter, a little bit of highlights were blown out. Okay, we're just gonna fly toward this cliff and keep your eye on kind of that center part, that layer of sediment with all the holes in it. Some sort of strange birds make their homes there. But I wanted you to just kind of check out the detail and check out the fact that those holes, well, they're black holes, which is kind of cool. Now, I shot this over a wetlands area, and as I keep getting the drone closer and closer to these plants, I think you'll appreciate the detail that we're seeing. Even though this is a 1080 output video, I will take some of this footage later and create just kind of raw 4K footage video for you like we did with the Mini 2. And this time we'll head up with the drone so you can see even more of that detail that can get packed into that sensor. Now, my experience with the DJI FPV drone was that it wasn't terribly accurate on return to home, but this guy, man, it was within inches every single time I brought this drone down. 
Like the Mavic Air 2, like the Mini 2, the Air 2S also features quick shots, where the drone will fly a pre-programmed route with you at the center as the subject and produce a quick video. One of those quick shots is called Asteroid, and I never got a chance to try that on the Mavic Air 2, but here it is now, and I really kind of like the look of this. It goes up and then we end up in this cool sort of tiny world 360. Like all of these, it only will produce the quick shot videos in 1080p. But still, it's kind of a cool effect, and if you just want to do a quick share of that on social media, it's perfect for it. And finally, we're not going to do every quick shot right now, maybe in another video, but here's the classic Drony, just straight back on an angle, ascending, and I believe Drony is a word DJI coined. Now, some of you may remember that back on April 1st, DJI released a little promo video that was both a teaser and an April Fool's Day joke. It said that DJI Master Shots was coming soon, but the video showed like a big DJI production crew that was available on demand 24-7. Well, there is sort of a production crew available 24-7, and that crew is basically inside the uh, DJI Fly app. Uh, this feature is called Master Shots, and what it does, the drone will take off. You identify yourself as the subject. It will fly around to several different nearby locations and take shots from different perspectives, and then stitch them all together using a template that you select and music that DJI provides. Now, of course, some of you would prefer to produce your own video and edit your own video, and undoubtedly you'd have better results. But for some people, it's a great way to just kind of take a snapshot of the day and pull it together for memories or for sharing on social media. So we'll take a quick look at one of these master shots and yeah, they're a little cheesy, but you know, for some people, it's a good feature. こういうことを二ヶ月前高校に入るまで俺は知らなかった。そう、今が一番。I have absolutely no idea what they were saying in Japanese. Um, I hope it wasn't too embarrassing. But the reason I decided at the last minute to drop a couple of more... Shut up. The reason I decided to drop a couple more in there was because basically um, I realized as I started playing with it that you can re-edit to all of these different templates after you've come back home. So you might decide, you know what, that Japanese one is not for me. I'm going to try Epic or something a little more laid back, whatever you want. But it's cool that it takes the content and produces videos of different lengths and the music, it's time to those shots. So I'm rethinking my assessment of that feature. At first I thought it was just cheese and now I think, you know what, I think for some people, perhaps even me on occasion, it might be a feature to use. The Air 2S also features a digital zoom that you can use while you're in video mode. So here we're shooting in 4K, but by tapping the function and rolling the gimbal wheel, you can zoom in four times. And I think I'm about to zoom back out. Here we go. Uh, very nice feature, and of course you can control the rate of the zoom just like you can control the speed of the gimbal, depending basically on how hard you push the gimbal scrolling wheel. And one more look at the zoom, this time pushing in rapidly to show you the Toronto skyline. 
Like all DJI products, it is rock solid, steady in the air. I think the fog here is drifting more than this drone ever will. I'm a big fan of a really light touch on the sticks and on the gimbal wheel. And this was just straight out of the box and just a gentle touch. You too can create shots like this and hopefully yours won't be, uh, won't have as much fog as I did on this day. A quick aside, a friend of mine, a professional photographer bought the Inspire One when it came out. We met at the lake and he took it right out over the water. And I was like, oh my God, bring it back. It could fall into the water. And of course, it didn't fall in the water. And these days, it is so rare for you to have a flyaway or that kind of failure that it's really not something you need to worry about. And if you are worried about it, you can cover flyaways with DJI Care Refresh. Now, if you're making a pro drone video, Obviously, you know, shoot with D-Log, do some color grading and really pimp it up to your heart's content. But for straight out of the camera, this color is pretty accurate. I was down on the ground by the trees that we're looking at here. And to my eye and my recollection, that's pretty much bang on. Same goes for the color of the water, the color of the rocks. Um, so if you're not someone who wants to get into color grading, you can rest assured that the color accuracy is pretty darn good for a drone in this price category. Remember when the earlier DJI drones would give you like 15 minutes of flight time? This drone, the Air 2S, will give you 31 minutes in the air. And that's pretty impressive. Now, some of you might put your hands up and say, wait, wait, the Mavic Air 2 gave us 34 minutes and that's true, we've lost three minutes. However, we've gained 25 grams. The Mavic Air 2 was 570 grams. This machine is 595, I believe. Uh, but think about it, we've got two extra sensors, we have a larger camera sensor, and we have a larger camera, I believe, on this machine. So it's not surprising you add 25 more grams, all other things being equal, your flying time will drop. But still, 31 minutes is a long time in the air. And just to give you an example, this shot with the train going by, I, I, I hung around and just waited for that train. I think I was in the air 15 or 20 minutes just waiting for the darn thing to show up. And when you've got a battery that'll give you 31 minutes of flight time, you can do that. On the safety side of things, in addition to all the other safety features that we've come to know and love or hate with DJI drones, um, there is AirSense. That is the ADS-B detection system. ADS-B stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And it is basically a little megaphone that most manned aircraft have built into them. And as a manned aircraft approaches, you will get a warning if it's getting close to you that will pop up on the app. And if you're really immersed, and particularly if you're flying alone and you don't have a visual observer with you, then that can be really handy. Because if you're focused on what you're shooting, you might not even hear a small aircraft approaching. So this is a great way to warn you that there's potentially going to be something coming close to you and maybe bring your drone back down. The other one, that I was intrigued to spot in the back end of the app and which was not really mentioned, or at least I didn't see it in the materials provided by DJI to reviewers, is the fact that this has remote ID built into it. So somewhere like 24 months or 30, 30 months from now, all drones will have to be equipped either internally or with an external module attached to the drone that broadcasts a signal that identifies what that drone is and where it is. That's a somewhat controversial move by the FAA, but it is all about safety. And as more and more drones get in the air, to me at least, it makes sense. So you can rest assured that the Air 2S is future-proofed because it does have remote ID built in. 
This drone is equipped with ActiveTrack 4.0, which allows you to select a person or object, and then the gimbal will remain locked on that person, whether you're flying it or whether it is flying pre-programmed waypoints, which is kind of cool. It also has more advanced obstacle avoidance or obstacle sensing in four directions with APAS 4.0, and also Point of Interest 3.0. Now, I did not get an opportunity to really put the tracking to the test, but hopefully I'll be able to do that while I still have the drone. This drone really does have a ton going for it. There's lots of stuff that I really, really like about this drone. I just wish it had a variable aperture on the camera instead of that fixed F2.8. But you can understand from DJI's perspective, that is a premium feature and something they will probably reserve for the Mavic Pro line, which I'm guessing is just going to be called the Pro 3 when the next version comes out. As for the still images, we will explore that in greater detail on our website, but what I've seen so far is really quite impressive and very detailed compared with the Mavic Air 2. Okay, so what do we think of this thing? Well, I was a big fan of the Mavic Air 2. Um, I didn't have it for very long to try out, but you know, when I used it, I really liked it. I thought it was very responsive. It was amazing that you could get 34 minutes in the air with that drone. And it just, you know, all folds down to a nice compact size. Uh, this is, you know, a fair bit smaller than the FPV drone that DJI just released. Of course, they're very different kinds of drones. Um, but this is a hell of a good drone. I think for the money, given that it now has a one inch sensor, given that it can shoot 5.4K video, given the fact that it's kind of future-proofed with remote ID baked in, given that it has AirSense, ADS-B detection, and many, many other features, including the additional obstacle avoidance sensors, those all go in to, you know, add up to a pretty good package that I think is going to hit a sweet spot because some people will want a drone larger than the Mini 2. And the Mini 2 is a great drone. I mean, it's a great drone. You can just take it to the park and off you go and no one's going to hassle you in, in most situations. But some people want to be able to fly farther. They want better imaging. They want more power. And this package gives you all of those things, plus a 31-minute flight time with a 1-inch CMOS sensor that has larger pixels than the Mavic Air 2 and is a significant jump in video and photo quality from the previous drone. So for me, this is a pretty good drone. I am actually quite tempted to buy it. The only thing I'm debating at the moment is, you know, do I wait for the Mavic Pro 3, which will probably just be called the Pro 3, uh, or do I get something now that I could probably really enjoy this summer? And that's, uh, that's something only I can decide, just as only you can decide whether this drone is right for you. I'm Scott Simi. I am the editor-in-chief of DroneDJ.com, and I guess I'll, I'll hit you up. You know, why don't you subscribe and enable notifications? We've got plans for more videos on the horizon and more videos regularly on the horizon. Thanks for tuning in.